Hey guys, welcome to today's video. This is going to be a quick version and this is Paint with Lovejoy. Thanks so much for joining. Please subscribe to the channel and share this channel with your community. Like I said earlier, this is going to be a quick version. So if you prefer the full length, non time lapsed version, check out my Patreon page and my Paint with Lovejoy website. If you want to further support Paint with Lovejoy, please do. It all helps. And for more in-depth courses, check out paintwithlovejoy.com. And as always, share this with your community. All right, guys, this is going to be another fun painting for pointillism. And this is going to be the time-lapsed version. If you want the real-time one, check out my Paint with Lovejoy website or my Patreon page. So since this is time-lapsed, do not go as fast as the video. Do transfer your traceable to your surface, and then we're going to be making repeating dots. So we're starting off with a light blue, and I will have the colors kind of pop up. Um, so follow the colors, pause the video as you need to, and observe where you watch me place each of the colors. Now for pointillism, you do want to make um, kind of the same repeating dots over and over. You can overlap the dots. Um, you can kind of clump the colors together, but you basically want to get into a nice repetition of making the same mark, um, a dot, uh, repeatedly. Now, when you find yourself starting to get kind of sloppy, take a break, come back to it, uh, maybe look at something, take a uh, walk for a little while, and then come back and pick up where you left off. So here you can see in the water area, we've used a light blue and a medium blue, filled up all that space. Um, we'll go back in with um, a little bit more of the light blue, and if there's any white of the canvas showing through, go back, overlap those dots, and kind of fill up that space. Then we're going to be moving into um, a little bit of a light purple, and that's adding just a touch of red to that blue. It's kind of like a little periwinkle color, and again, giving a little bit more depth to the water area that we were just applying our dots to. And then going in with white for that back kind of wall. Then we'll be moving in with shades of light green and medium green or yellow green. And because I'm using primary colors, we did make our own green and that was yellow with a touch of blue. If you have a tube of green paint that you want to use, you can mix that with yellow or you can use it from that tube. But again, we're still making those same dots, those same um, overlapping dots to kind of fill up the space. And we're going to hang out with this color for quite a bit as we fill up quite a bit of the grassy area. So a few things to note as you're going about this. Um, this is called pointillism. It's really therapeutic, sometimes tedious, but it's a nice way to just kind of get lost in the process of painting and it's a simple application. You're just making dots. Try not to go too fast. Don't get too far ahead of yourself. And if you have to mix your shade of color um, a second or third time, don't stress about the color maybe being a little more yellow or a little more blue or a little lighter or darker than your last color. Um, because of the method of pointillism, having that variety actually makes your painting a little bit more intriguing. So again, don't stress about getting perfect color mixtures each time you have to mix your color. So here you can see we're still working with that light green or that yellow green. And there's a few places that I can see already that maybe it's a little more yellow and maybe it's a little more green in a few areas. We're going to be adding some blue into this, going a little bit darker and going back into the trees and then back into the grass. But it is kind of fun to notice how um, the painting changes, how the color changes when you put another lighter or darker color next to it. Um, and by adding this slightly darker green, we're already having some definition in the trees. So again, take notice of how you're interpreting colors differently as you are going through this painting. And you're kind of getting a slight introduction to what we call color theory. We interpret our colors based on the color next to it. And again, this is a great exercise to just get nice exposure to that, as well as getting kind of comfortable with your brush, the pressure, um, you can apply these dots with uh, the brush. You can use a square tipped brush. You could use the back end of the brush. You could use a Q-tip. Some people have done this finger painting. Um, anything that you want to do to kind of keep making a repetitive mark and then just overlapping those and creating your space, creating your image. Now, again, hopefully you are not painting as fast as the video. Please take your time check out the full length video and pause this one as needed. 
Strengthening your power of observation is an awesome art skill that you will constantly, constantly improve upon and utilize. So again, here you can see where we added a little bit more blue, going a little bit darker, filling in that space. If you are finding that your brush is kind of shaky, exhale as you touch your brush to the canvas. Um, if you are shaky, sometimes that does mean you're holding your breath. So kind of check in. Are you holding your breath? Are you nervous? Take a big inhale, let it out. The only way to fail at painting is to not paint at all. So you are already successful right now just by going through the process. So hopefully that takes a little bit of pressure off. Um, I'm already proud of you guys just for doing this. So if you need to, um, like I'm doing right here, I'm actually going back to that yellow green and filling in space. So sometimes that happens. You'll put in a, a bunch of color, a darker color, and then you go, oh, I actually need more lighter color here. So go back to that color. Totally okay. You do have full permission to deviate from what I'm doing on the screen. Um, if you're looking at the original Syrah painting, feel free to um, add to your painting what you may observe on the original compared to what I'm painting, because I am doing a more uh, simple and stylized version. I'm not including all the colors. But no, either one, if you're watching the video, you're looking at the original, you are still strengthening your power of observation. Again, another great skill to utilize. All right, and it's already starting to look a little bit different. Take those progress photos and pause the video when you need to. And trust your instincts. As we get a little further along in the painting, I'm going to encourage that you get out of your chair. Look at your painting from a distance of 5 to 10 feet away. It is going to look different. Generally, it looks a little bit better, and we tend to like things better from a distance. So don't be upset if you like your painting more from a distance than you do while you're up close and painting it. Now, as you're looking at it from the distance, if your instincts are going, oh, you know what, we need some lighter color here. Maybe we need to add a little something here. I want you to trust that. Trust what your instincts are saying when you're looking at that painting from a distance, and then go back and add it. And this is something that you will continue to develop every time that you paint. And this is what we call communicating with yourself, your subject matter, and your painting. And with, like anything, the more that you communicate that um, through those channels, the easier and more fluid the conversation becomes. So be kind to yourself and enjoy the process. So now we're moving into a little bit of a light pink, and that is white with a tiny amount of red, and it is crazy, crazy light on mine. So if yours is a little darker than what I have on the screen, totally okay. And a little bit of brush maintenance, something to think about. If your dots are starting to get bigger than what you were originally doing, a uh, few things. Maybe you have a lot of uh, buildup of paint on your brush. Take a look at that, and if you do, wipe off the brush, wipe off that excess paint, uh, maybe fully clean it and then go back to reapplying. Or if there's nothing wrong with your brush and the brush strokes keep getting bigger, that does mean you might be getting tired and um, starting to get a little sloppy. So take a break, go for a walk, and then come back to your painting when you're a little more refreshed. Now we're moving into a bit darker pink. Um, and that was just adding more red to our pink and filling in the space. And now we're actually moving into warm colors. And take notice of how it starts to look different as you've introduced this red. Now we're moving into purple. And that is going to be blue and red mixed. And because both my blue and red are a cool red and blue, this is a really dark purple. So if you happen to have different colored paint or different uh, reds or blues that I'm using, your purple might be a little lighter or darker compared to what I am using on the screen. And whatever your color happens to be, just embrace it for your painting today. Utilize what you have, um, utilize what you are learning right now, and make the painting your own. You know, this is more about the practice of painting. We're not here for perfection because your idea of perfection is going to change as you learn more and as you get more comfortable with your tools and your skills. So still with that purple, you can see where I'm putting it on the grass and where we've put it on a few of the figures in this um, composition. Now we're going back to that light blue and adding it to a few of the areas and then we'll be going a little bit darker from here. But you guys are doing a great job. I am so proud of you for taking time out of your day to learn about pointillism, to learn about painting, and really even just to hang out with me. Thanks for hanging out and getting creative.
As you do this, please keep pushing your uh, comfort zone with your creativity and please try to find creative outlets on a regular weekly or monthly basis. You will see your skills improve um, the more regular that you practice and the more regular you paint. So now moving into a bit darker blue, almost the direct blue. And again, just a power of observation where you're seeing this placed. And if you need to, feel free to pause the video, take a screenshot, and then you can zoom in a little bit closer on some of these details. Because I do realize this is a rather busy and a, um, uh, a lot of elements in this composition compared to some of the other videos on my channel. And this one was a request. Uh, somebody, one of my, a couple of my students actually, wanted to learn about pointillism. So I did three Syrah uh, paintings with this one being the smallest dots and probably the most tedious out of the three. So take your time. Again, do not paint as fast as the video. This is sped up. I forgot how much, um, but it's sped up quite a bit. But it's a nice way to kind of see it in a fast motion to see how it transforms and then just take your time during your painting. So now moving into a bit of a yellow orange and that is yellow with a little bit of red and then adding some white to that kind of orangish color for these skin tones. You are more than welcome to switch out skin tones if you want to do something darker or lighter. For some of the darker skin tone colors, you can start using raw sienna or burnt sienna. Play with those. And then now going back to the green, filling in any place that I can see the white of the canvas showing through. And again, overlapping those dots. Some of this lighter green will be going on the darker colors. And again, I realize how fast it is going. So please take your time. Again, I'm proud of you guys for painting at home and just getting creative. And hopefully aside from watching the video, you are not engaging with your electronics at all and you are physically painting your painting. <laughs> all right, so going with that white with a little bit of yellow, you can add a touch of red if you need to um, for the tree trunks. If you do have brown, raw sienna, or burnt sienna, you're more than welcome to uh, make brown tree trunks, whatever you would like to do. All right, this is coming along nicely. Pretty cool how it has changed from that blank white surface. And now going in with kind of a grayish purple for some of these finer details. And there's going to be quite a few colors that pop up for some of these small details. So again, pause the video and maybe just move it forward a few frames um, as you are finishing this up, or just go in your own direction and add the colors that you want to your painting. I'm so proud of you guys. And no matter what you paint today, please send me pictures. I love seeing those. It gives me encouragement to continue to make these, and it's a great way to show other people um, that they can learn to paint too with simple step-by-step -step instruction. All right, again, pause that video. I apologize for this uh, skewed part on the video. I didn't realize I kicked the stand um, until I was editing the video. So I'm human. I make mistakes. All right, so going back to that lighter skin tone, just adding a few of the extra details, add anything that you want to your painting, anything extra that I don't do, anything that you want to do, anything that you may see in the original picture that I do not place in here. But have fun with this. All right, looking good. So I hope you guys are proud of yourself when you are completely done. I want you to put the painting away. Do not look at this until tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning, you will have fresh eyes and see the final piece compared to your brain today, remembering all the work that you've been putting into this. So sometimes we have to trick our brain a little bit as we learn something new. So thanks again for hanging out with me. Please don't wait too long to do your next painting. And until next time, cheers.